folks, and welcome to this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I've got another one here for you. It's another 15 horse Johnson. I just took it on trade. Uh, sold one in a previous video that I got running tip top, running perfect. You guys saw it all run really good. I took this one on trade. Uh, said he couldn't get it running. Uh, retreat, he said he put a new carburetor on it, new fuel pump, new water pump, and all that kind of fun stuff on it. Well, I went through a check spark. First thing I found wrong is it had the wrong spark plugs in it. So I put the right spark plugs in it. I checked compression. We got 90 plus pounds of compression in both cylinders. So that's not as tall as it can be or as high as it can be, but it'll, it'll actually run pretty good on 90 pounds plus, no problem. The other thing I found is that there was a little bit of water in the gearbox. So I changed the gearbox oil. We're gonna run it in the water for a while and see what's going on there. Chances are we might have to replace some seals. What I got to do now, though, is uh, when I was running, I did get it running. I did get it popping along, uh, but it won't idle good. It runs pretty smooth when it's running. Uh, it had a fuel pump, a leak on the line going into the fuel pump. I got that sealed back off. I'm probably going to replace that fuel line because the one that's in there is fossilized. It's hard. It's not one to seal good. I got some brand new fuel line I can put on it. and It'll take care of that problem post haste. But I noticed that it was spraying water out of the, the one hole in the back, but out of the pee hole, there was no water coming out. And it was starting to drip a little bit, and that was it. So I'm going to have to dig into that a little bit. But first thing I'm going to do, uh, supposedly there was a new water pump in it. I'm going to go down in there and pull that lower unit off. We're going to do that together, and we're going to examine that uh, water pump to see what's going on there. If that all looks good, then the chances are it might be a thermostat or a plugged line somewhere up in the head. So we're going to analyze this thing together. We're going to put a new carb kit in it because the carb uh, needs some stuff done to it. The little gasket that goes into the idle air mixture screw is all dried out and done. Uh, if there was a carb kit put in it, that comes with the carb kit and somebody should have put that in and they did not. So it warrants pulling the carburetor off and, and looking through that and making sure everything is as it should be there. So without further ado, let's dive in and pull this uh, gearbox off and check out this water pump. All right, let's get after that water pump. First thing you gotta do is remove these six 7 sixteenths. They're actually quarter inch bolts, but they're a 7 sixteenths head, take a 7 sixteenths socket. And right off the bat, I can see somebody has messed with this one and put not stainless bolts in it because these are all rusty. So that's gonna be the first order of business is we're gonna have to get new bolts. Not stainless. Quick special note, you can see here, they use two, these two different length bolts there. They should have all been at least this length of bolt and they should have been stainless, which they did not use. So there again, this, this here outboard was one that uh, I took in on trade, said the water pump was recently replaced. Somebody's been in there, obviously, not the right bolts. We don't know who did it, but he said the water pump should be good. We're gonna find out firsthand if it is because for whatever reason, water wasn't pumping as well as it should be let's take a look back into it now the other thing i want to make a note of is when you go to pull these bolts out when you get them all pulled out you also want to be in the forward position on the gear shifter which allow the lower unit to drop far enough to access there's a pinch bolt on a shift shaft that you need to remove let's look at it now all right we're going to shift her into forward gear see how that drops out right there a lot of water hanging out in this lower unit too this this down here is full and this should be draining down from here when you take the outboard motor out of the water this should empty all the way down if that's not emptying properly if this would be stored that way in the winter time it could split this case and that would not be good but right now you can see there's access to the bolt here and we're going to take this bolt all the way out Usually behind this bolt is a star washer, which is not there. Now we should be able to slide this the rest of the way out. But yeah, check this out. There's all that water being in there. And that should be coming out that weep hole, which I'm guessing is plugged up with whatever. Problem number two. Now here's what, here's what I'm saying, folks. 
right there. You see that? There's no rubber boot in there. There's supposed to be a rubber boot in there. Failure number two by somebody. That drives me absolutely nuts. So that couldn't seal the water tube off so the water could pump up through the engine. It could easily, easily have, have, have overheated if I wasn't paying attention to what was going on. Absolutely insane. It would appear looking down in here, I know you can't see it, but that looks like it's just full of grit and sand and everything in between. That's why it's not letting it pump through. I'm gonna flush this out with water. That's amazing, there's so much crap packed in here. I, it was probably filled up to here with just sand and stuff and I flushed it out and it got down to about here it looks like. And now this is just packed with some kind of greasy, emulsification, sticky, I'm not sure what it is, but I can't get water or air through it yet. And what that's gonna cause is a problem if you don't get that cleaned out, is water sits in there, sits on top of the seal on your shift shaft and just waits for an opportunity to get into your crankcase or into your gearbox. So I've kind of got a little wire welding wire piece. I'm trying to do a little rotor rooter action here to see if I can get it broke loose. And, and right now I'm up in there about that far, which ain't quite far enough. We'll keep working at it though. Turns out that gunk was so thick that I took my drill bit and I went on the front part of this here and went down and I could feel when it broke through the stuff. Now I can blow air through it like it needs to be. Now water will drain. But I'm gonna take some uh, brake cleaner or something, spray down in there and see if I can get that flushed out and get all that sticky stuff out of there so it doesn't collect up again. Let's dive in and take a look at that water pump now. Now this would appear to have a lot of uh, assembly grease still in there. Maybe. It looks kind of funky. Whatever's on there looks really funky. Good news is, yes, I would agree that this is a relatively new uh, impeller just because of the way it sprung back to almost straight again. We're definitely going to reuse that. I do believe they did put a new impeller in. One thing I do know for sure is they did not put this piece in. I'll show you what that looks like. What would normally go down in here would be a part that looks similar to that that has the little bumps on it that line up with those holes and you put that in there all the way down and then your copper water tube would go in there and seal against that so it would force the water up through the rest of the motor. Alrighty, we've got all the pump pieces cleaned up here. We've slid the impeller back in place. Now we're going to put the housing back on. Remember, cover this stuff in some grease so it doesn't go together dry. Grab a hold of the housing, push down, and turn the shaft clockwise. Walk it right in. And reinstall your four bolts and snug them back down. Now we're going to install the one piece that two whoever else put the water pump in forgot to do. The part that uh, seals up your water tube. So you actually pump water up through your motor. And not just out into the housing. Well, it's time to rest that gearbox back in place. Like always, make sure you put grease on the end. Yeah. Grease on the end and slide her in. Now what I did do is replace the old steel bolts with some brand new stainless bolts to bolt this back together so now it has the proper fasteners in place. Cool, cool, cool. Now we got the gearbox on. Now we can go to the carburetor. Now that we got the gearbox installed, it's time to go ahead and pull. We got to pull this starter, get it out of the way so I can get at these bolts here to get the carburetor off so we can put a carb kit in it. So let's get started by removing this bolt. Now here you want to pay close attention not to let the spring come out of the pan down here. So as you pull this up, keep this cl clamped together as good as you can and you can set it off to the side while you work on the carburetor. I'm backing off this screw here. I want you guys to see what's happening. I thought this roller seemed like it was quite a ways away from the, I don't know what you call that little rub ramp where it's uh, 
This is basically a throttle control. And when I went to take this out, look at what's happening here. Watch this bolt. Bolt's bent. So that's why it was acting funny. And, or not acting funny, that's why it was, uh, looked like I was gonna have to make a lot of adjustment with this screw. And I'm glad I didn't go ahead and do that because chances are if I would adjusted it as much as it needed adjusted, I would have broke this piece. So we'll have to get us a, a straight bolt in here. So just things to watch for. These are all new to me. Well, we got that piece out of the way. We can take the carb off. First thing I'm gonna do is pull the bowl off. We'll take a look at what's going on inside there. Like I said, I don't think this uh, carburetor is too horrible. It was running, but I'll show you a couple of things to watch for. It may not be a couple, it may only be one. I like seeing that, that's a really clean bowl. Here you want to make sure you can see clearly through that hole that it's not plugged with anything at all. You can see through that real nice. Here's the idle air mix mixture adjustment screw. And as you can see, it's missing stuff. It would let air go by there. You want to control the air that goes by the needle, not to suck past the screw. So obviously that was wrong. And when I was spinning this by hand, I could tell it was loose. So I knew that was shot. Your new carb kit comes with a new one of these talked about this before in my other videos there's three holes as you can see right in that barrel you want to make sure air and liquid and everything can pass through those three holes freely to make sure they're not plugged that's interesting look in there somebody has done a patch job on this carburetor How screwed up the things have to get before you weld on a carburetor good lord how do you damage a carburetor to the point you have to weld on it good news is it looks like they did a nice job there's no porosity in there it looks like it sealed up pretty well i think i'm just gonna let that play why wouldn't i it looks pretty decent and if it runs right then it is right all righty what i'm going to try to do here is save this bent bolt you can see here how bent that is when i roll it around I've got three nuts that fit this thread. What that allow me to do is I can line these up like that and I can put it in a vise and not damage my threads. Like so. And that allows me to still spin it. I think I'll go a little deeper in the vise here. Come here. All right, let's try that. Still a high spot over here, it's leaning to this direction. I think we got that pretty darn good. It's not going round and round and wobbling once I'm getting down in there way, so. I think we might've been able to salvage it. It's not only good, it's good enough. Okay, 
I took a little file. I don't know how much of a, how much screwing around you have to do to actually get a bird developed on one of these screws that holds that little piece of plastic on, but somebody did. But now I've got it straight and I got the burrs cleaned off. It's ready to go back on when I'm ready to reinstall the carburetor. So we saved the day there. All right, we've got the new needle and seat in here. It's just reverse of what you did to take it apart. You just pulled, you know, put that pin in. You pulled the pin and lifted this out to take it apart. Uh, but we're gonna come in close here. I wanna show you something closely. When this is back together, you can see that this should be adjusted to where the bottom of this is parallel with the bowl. And that'll allow, so when this thing fills up with gas, because it operates, this is upside down, when it gets low on gas, it does this and lets gas in. When it fills up, it goes to here and shuts the gas off. Cool. Now we're ready to put the gasket on and we'll put our jet back in here that we know is clean. And then we'll put the bowl and gasket back on. We'll screw the jet back in. And honestly, it's probably a good idea to put that jet back in before you put the float back in in case you slip. <laughs> and damage your float but i didn't slip so we're good we've got our new gasket here put our bowl back on now we're going to install this new little red gasket here that just pushes right in there with that little key and when you go to thread your jet back in there, your idle mixture jet, it's gonna thread tough, it's gonna have resistance. That's the whole idea behind it. It's gonna cut the threads and make that tight so that knob doesn't just float around on you. Now we're gonna take this to a bottomed out condition. Right there, it stopped, bottomed out. Then I want you to back this out one and a half turns, just like that. That's a great starting point right there. Now we're ready to put the carburetor back on. And we got our intake manifold gasket. Let it go in place. The carb job is done. All right, we're gonna install our gasket. Whoops. Put our carburetor back in place and put the two nuts back on and secure the carburetor. One of the things you want to adjust and watch for here is see this little bump right here? And I don't have, have any idea what this is called, this little plate, black plate here. I'll learn the names eventually. But when you're turning this throttle, the, you want to have that just starting to open up the butterfly when that wheel makes contact. So the center of that wheel is in the center of that. Then you'll have your throttle timing set. So that's what I've done here. So once that's done, And people have taken and clipped things onto the end of the throttle plate here, the shaft over here, so and sticks up high. So when you start to detect it, any sense of movement there at all, uh, you can then you know you've got it set right. So once you see that move and you see that lined up, then your throttle timing is set. I'm gonna call that good. I think we're gonna be able to run real good right there. Now, I did take the opportunity to pull that bolt out, put a little light grease on it, put it back in. That sure makes things work a lot nicer. But now we're gonna. Hold everything together, take my clamp off. And this time we're gonna make sure this little locator here is where it belongs. So we've got the carburetor bolted back on. We've got the choke back in place. We've got our starter back in place and we did replace the fuel line before the fuel pump and after the fuel pump. So that's all brand new and fresh. And uh, I think we're it, ready to put it in the tank and give it a couple yanks. And let's see if we can get this thing to pop. Wow, that's not bad too when it pops. Water again, yay! Got that problem too. I'll let it warm 
them up, then we'll do the final adjustment here. She's right as rain now. Yeah, what do you think, boy? All right, we've been out here. It's been sitting out here outside about two hours. Just like I've been fishing outside for two hours, and let's see what it takes to get it started after it's been sitting. I'm not gonna choke it. I'm gonna see if it's cold with no choke. Oh, I shouldn't have choked it. Start, bring it back to midway when she's running.
Oh, folks, there she is in all her girl glory. Running as it should. She's a beauty. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I had a good time doing this video. Uh, happy to have a motor running. Now, something I do, and you see it in the tank quite a bit in the video, what you see on the video is a fraction of the time that I run these things in the tank. And it's just not what everybody does. It's not required. I don't know. Uh, I like to run these things for two to three hours in the tank. Just sit there and run and rev them up, down, run, in and out of gear. Because I really want to make sure that when I rehome this to a the next uh, person that they're getting something that I feel pretty confident is going to give them a lot of good performance because there's nothing worse than going out there being halfway through your fishing trip or just getting started and your motor fails that's so disheartening and and just just wrecks your day honestly and so I want to do everything I can to not wreck somebody's day if I'm going to make it a habit and a hobby of buying some of these old motors fixing them up and then selling them and then doing a video so you guys and, and myself can learn along the way how to fix and keep your outboard going. But yeah, I'll run this thing for hours and uh, this is what I do. And uh, I think we got this running pretty good. I've got it actually out there running right now. It's after dark uh, and I've got it just sitting in the tank running idling and then i'll go out and rev it up every now and then and then i'll go in and do some more editing on the video for per, for instance and then go back out there and start uh, you know shut it off let it sit for a few hours and it sits in the water all this time because i know not everybody takes their motor off the boat or takes their boat out of the water every day so i'm kind of preparing for the worst for the person that's for instance if you're out there uh, camping and you have this thing pulled up to a dock or slip in a dock at a campground and you left it in there overnight well, you want to be relatively assured that the gearbox is good and nothing's going to go wacky on you just sitting in the water. And that's what I'm doing with this one. After I pull it out of the water, I'm going to let it sit for another probably 24 hours. And then I want to pull that plug out to see if there's any water in the gearbox. If there's no water in the gearbox, then I can have a, a relatively high confidence level that this is going to serve uh, somebody well for quite a while. One thing I haven't done on this motor yet is pull the prop off. I've Every motor I've dealt with so far, I pull the prop off, make sure there's no fishing line behind the prop and get rid of that so it doesn't ruin the seal back there. But we'll do that, but no sense in me showing you that. I've done that in enough other videos. Uh, but we're gonna move on to the next project and and uh, show you that one as well. Behind me, you can see I've got the old banana here. It's looking pretty good. Got it cleaned up. I gotta do some more wiring on it yet over here. I gotta hook up these switches. Uh, to hook up the lights I've got not one but two batteries in here now we took this to the scale today and I'll give you a little preview that you're not gonna see the final one until of the final video of the banana until it's actually on the water but we took the boat and trailer across the scales today just to see what the boat and trailer weighed because this has only got like the 12 inch trailer tires but it's a 14 foot fiberglass boat you've seen if you followed and seen the video You've seen all the stuff I put in the bottom. I put new three quarter inch plywood supports in there. I put new half inch plywood. I resin, poly resin and fiberglass, everything in there. It's all brand new flooring, new carpeting. And I got two 12 volt batteries in there, deep cycle batteries. I got my casting deck. I got a 99, 15 horse hanging on the back. And uh, so I've got almost everything that's gonna be in the boat besides my tackle box and my life jackets. Uh, the throwable, or not throwable, but the anchor, but about another 100 pounds worth of stuff. By the time I fill the fuel tank up, i got a six gallon fuel tank in here. Uh, probably be another 100 pounds, but this thing weighed just over a thousand pounds. It's really quite light. I was impressed at how light things are. I thought this thing was going to be just heavy for the size of the boat, but it, it is not heavy at all. So I'm pretty thrilled with that. Anyway, there'll be more, more videos coming on this guy. The next video I'll have on this guy, it will be on the water. Unfortunately, I've got to wait till I can get it registered. Uh, having a little bit of holdup going on there with the registration, but we'll get it on the water. It's coming. I'm, I'm sorry, folks, but it might be up to four to six weeks before they see the finale on this one, but I promise you it's coming. And uh, 
then we'll have it on the water and we'll get some great drone footage of it on the water and see how it performs, what's the top speed and all that fun stuff. Anyway, without further ado, this is Michael, I'm out. Thank you.